build a team, and be proactive with them, and this is my rule in being proactive. Their job is to show me the law, my job is to brainstorm, which brainstorming doesn't get you in trouble unless you apply it without law behind it. So I was like, cool, I'm going to Italy for two months, I wanna write this Italy trip off. I think better in Italy, my wife and I are gonna do our annual meeting there. And guess what, you can write off your annual meeting. So we gotta write off part of the trip for that. I said, I'm gonna do a mastermind, I'm gonna invite my clients out for one day and do a mastermind, so I could write that off a little bit. We had friends that are clients that stayed there, so I'm like, what can I do to write that off? So we just went through all the different ideas of how we could write off that trip, and I didn't get a yes on probably three-fourths of them, but the one-fourth I did get a yes on, they just showed me the documentation behind it, we classify it, and all of a sudden I get more to write off. So your job is to brainstorm, their job is to tell you why it's legal or not legal, and you only do the very legal, ethical things. Let's get into the taxes. I'm gonna have stuff that you can put on the ground and implement by Monday, okay? Unless you don't want that. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the two things to avoid. These are tax traps. I once had a consultant call me because he had an event in November. He joined our program just before the event. The event was wildly successful. He did $500,000 of revenue at it. And then when he told his accountant about it, he goes, oh, well, I wasn't counting on that, so congratulations for the good year. By the way, when you hear an accountant say congratulations, that's the most skeptical congratulations of your life. Congratulations, great year. By the way, uh, you owe an extra $252,000 of tax. So this guy, Gary, calls me, he's like, what do I do? Like, what do I buy? That was his first in kind of inclination, is what do I buy? And I said, let's say that you didn't have this tax issue. What would you buy otherwise? And he said, nothing. I said, then we're not gonna buy it because don't let the tax tell wag the dog. Don't spend a dollar to save 40 cents. That doesn't make sense. So what we did instead, as I said, when do you actually render the services? He says, well, they'll start in January and they'll be each month throughout next year. I'm like, great. Let's move to accrual-based accounting, which means that we'll pay taxes on it next year. That buys us 13 months before we have to have all the strategy done, and it buys us even more time, like 17 months before you actually have to write the check. So he was really excited about that. So don't let the tax tail wag the dog, right? There's other things you can do. The second thing is, deferring tax doesn't mean saving tax. The US right now has a $20 trillion debt, and there's so many people that think they're saving tax when they put money in a retirement plan. And I'll tell you how to get money out of your retirement plan without taxes to support your business and everything you're up to, if you want that too. So, Let's just say you put $10,000 in a retirement plan. This could be a simple, a SEP, a 401k, a 403b, a 457, an RSP, whatever letters and numbers are out there, it's all pretty much the same thing, right? You put 10,000 in and you get the statement and it looks like you have $10,000, but guess what, you don't. Because if you wanna take it out before 59 and a half, you actually only have $5,000 because you owe 4,000 in tax, Plus, you owe a $1,000 penalty. Hell, I went to Catholic school. You know what penalty meant in Catholic school? <laughs> yeah, I don't like that word. Scary word, but it, it isn't that bad of a penalty. Imagine if I was willing to give you a loan right now, and I only charge you 10% the first year and never charged you interest on it again. Who thinks that might be a decent business loan, right? So they just are trying to prevent you from using your own capital. But, so really all you have got in here is 5,000 bucks. Well, in 1913, they came out with this little thing called the US Revenue Act. It was gonna be a really temporary thing. And now the top bracket's 39.6%, which that might sound high, but you gotta realize the top bracket since 1913 averaged out is 61.7%. So what happens if you defer this tax into the future and it's a higher tax rate? If you wanna be in a lower tax rate in the future, ask yourself how that's gonna be. A, who's here because they want less money in the future? Show of hands, <laughs> right? B. If your kids still live at home when you're in your 70s, you either got a really late start <laughs> or you can't write them off anymore, right? So, or if you sell your business, you lose that tax haven. So to be in a lower tax bracket, inflation alone doesn't really allow that to happen because think about it. 30 years ago, $1,000 meant a lot different amount of money than $1,000 today. So as you have more money, it's not like they go, because of inflation, we're gonna lower the tax rates. No, you actually have to earn more because of inflation to spend the same amount of money and taxes actually start to hit that even harder. So those are the two things to avoid. Don't just defer, and if you, you know, there are strategies around this, because I remember at 70 and a half when I told my grandma, I said, hey, you have to start taking money out of your retirement plan. That was the first time I heard her say the F word. 
Not the last, mind you. Like, her committee, I think, in her head that used to filter that just passed out. <laughs> you know? And now it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> and she lives in Colorado, and I'm about to do a stand-up comedy gig in Colorado where she's 50% of the material. And she is so, she's so excited because she always wants me to tell inappropriate jokes at inappropriate times, you know? And that's actually an appropriate time to do those things. So. Here's the three-part framework that is actually going to put money in your pocket. Now you know what to avoid. The first one is, it sounds simplistic, might be the hardest thing to do. The other two are just going to be even more immediate. The first one is, I've got a few parts. Part A is you've got to be proactive with your taxes, meaning every quarter you're talking to your tax team. And I said tax team. That's the part B. You want to have at least some type of bookkeeping so that you have the data, because if you're giving it to them between January and April, that's a brain-dead season for them. You want to have next year's strategy starting to figure out today. This year's strategy should have been figured out last year, right? Most people are a year behind, which is really like two years behind. I want you to get ahead. Now, a CPA is worth their weight in gold if they're good. It's hard to find the right one sometimes because it's different if you're a business owner than if you're an employee. It's different if you're in a certain type of business. And then if you get to the point where you're making multiple millions, you want a tax attorney. My tax attorney gave me some of the cool strategies. For example, I built a building years ago, and when he walked in, he's like, man, a lot of white space on these walls. Do you think you might put some pictures on it? I was like, yeah. He goes, by the way, I have an art dealer I can connect you with, and you can buy a collection from them, and if you promise not to sell it on the open market, they'll give you a deep discount. So I bought $2.2 million worth of art for 300 grand. But guess what happens after you've owned art for three years? You get to appraise it and donate it, so for every dollar of, that I spent on art that was on my walls, the government gave me back $2 when I gave it to museums and colleges. Kind of cool strategy, right? So I have now donated all the art my wife will allow, because now we have art at the house that I'm like, by the way, everything on the wall is worth $3,000 in our pocket, just so you know. She's like, it's worth more than that aesthetically in the house. So we have some nice art in the house, and I maybe will buy some more, but I, I, you know, it, it kind of just depends on what you want to do. The other thing that my, my attorney showed me was that if you're in a state with state tax, but you're in a business where your clients are all over, and like I sell books and those kind of things, anytime someone outside of my state buys something from me, I can run it through Wyoming through what's called a WING, W-I-N-G, it's a grantor defective income trust. I don't have to pay state tax on that. So that saves me about $50,000 a year, thanks to my tax attorney. Or right now, I'm in, I'm in the middle of setting up my own C corporation that I can insure my businesses instead of having an insurance company do it. So all the money I put in there is pre-tax. I get to invest it within certain parameters. And by the way, if I don't use it for an insurance claim, which how much insurance do you pay for and never use? A lot, right? I get to take it out as a capital gain, which effectively cuts my taxes in half. Right? By the way, you could put up to $2.2 million in something like that. So it's pre-tax, and then you pull it out at half the tax. And if your business has any you know, employee disruption, uh, online reputation risk, you can actually use that cash. So build a team and be proactive with them. And this is my rule in being proactive. Their job is to show me the law my job is to brainstorm, which brainstorming doesn't get you in trouble unless you apply it without law behind it. So I was like, cool, I'm going to Italy for two months. I want to write this Italy trip off. I think better in Italy. My wife and I are going to do our annual meeting there. And guess what? You can write off your annual meeting. So we got to write off part of the trip for that. I said, I'm going to do a mastermind. I'm going to invite my clients out for one day and do a mastermind. So I could write that off a little bit. We had friends that are clients that stayed there. So I'm like, what can I do to write that off? So we just went through all the different ideas of how we could write off that trip. And I didn't get a yes on probably three-fourths of them. But the one-fourth I did get a yes on, they just showed me the documentation behind it. We classify it. And all of a sudden, I get more to write off. So your job is to brainstorm. Their job is to tell you why it's legal or not legal. And you only do the very legal, ethical things, right? Second part of the framework to be successful with tax. The second piece is you look at every expense in your life and you ask one simple question. Does this relate to my business? If the answer is yes, guess what? That expense becomes a deduction. 
I'm gonna, this is where I crushed it for Pete. So I'm giving you Pete's strategies right here that got him. I think he's 100% of the way uh, economically independent now or very close, but the problem is he would have been, but his lifestyle, a luxury once enjoyed becomes a necessity. He was in Park City this week. He was in Aruba recently. So we had him 81% of the way there. I think we got to 100. Now he's back down to like 81% because life is good, right? And his business is doing well. And that's totally cool because I want people to enjoy life. But this was the first thing that we did. Ever, any of you ever host clients, employees, vendors at your own home? Okay, well there was a senator that had a home in Augusta, Georgia, and there's 14 days of the year where Augusta, Georgia becomes extraordinarily valuable. You may have heard of it. The Masters, yes. So he wanted to be able to rent his place out during that time for like five times what it would normally get rented out for, but he didn't want to pay tax, so now we have the Augusta rule. You can rent your home out to your business 14 days a year, write that off for the business, and you don't have to pay tax personally. The days I like to rent out are in Utah, there's the outdoor recreation show. Yep, you can rent it for three times as much because you just pull up the Airbnbs or you go to a conference center, ask how much it is, everything's more expensive and it's sold out. Or we had some clients in Cleveland during the Republican National Convention, so they charged three times more for the time they hosted a dinner. As a matter of fact, Aaron in the back of the room with the beard and the very strong lad that obviously does too much CrossFit, um, he came about working with us because he came to one of those dinners where I had hosted some clients and some of our team. But at the same day, we got this huge piece of furniture dropped off and the movers were like, uh, we can't get that up the stairs, thank you. So it was just in the middle of our house for the function. I said, dude, need some functional fitness, will you come move this, I'll let you stay for dinner. He's like, I love your team, I love your clients, I'd love to work with you. So hell, you get all these extra bonus features while you're writing stuff off, right? So the Augusta rule is a big deal. That was about $75,000 of savings for Pete. Um, every year, because he's hosting stuff at the Broadmoor, then he'll just bring his inner circle over to his house, have a little dinner, and all of a sudden you get to write that off. Um, the other thing is, if you have kids that are 18 and under, you can pay them $6,300. Now you have to have a reason to pay them, not that they mowed the lawn, that doesn't really do a whole lot, That's, but there's a $2,500 modeling fee if they show up in your office or on your website, that's union standard. You know, I'm paying my kids a thousand bucks a month now because I'm writing a children's book, so the nine-year-old's helping me with that. He's my research. The 12 year old started an e-commerce business because we have so many people in e-commerce that I'm like, I need to know everything about it and see what it's like and go through it. So I'm going through that with him to help him start his first business. So I'm paying them and I get to write that off. No taxes at 6,300. Their tax rate above that, which is 10%, that's a pretty cool way to turn an expense and turn it into a deduction. So. You just have to document, that's the key with this. Documentation. I'm not an overly analytical person. I document it on my American Express bill. My CFO prints stuff out, has folders. I mean, it's an amazing, but I've been audited twice in my life, zero issue, and I'm super aggressive on write-offs. Like, this is my uniform. Because when I'm not on stage, I've adopted the yoga lifestyle. I don't do yoga, but I wear yoga clothes. <laughs> So I don't write those off, but then I write this off, right? You know, I, I could tell there's some other folks that do the same thing. You know, my wife doesn't do yoga, but she got tons of Lululemon all over the house, so, <laughs> so it's cool. Um, it's just comfortable. She sold me on sweats. Now I'm the dude wearing sweats. You know, so useless facts for you guys in the middle of the content, but <laughs> but I actually write this off as uniform. So I have a TV studio. We have a, we have a multi-platinum artist that he's like, oh, I can't write off my clothes. I'm like, do you do your own videos? He's like, yeah. I'm like, cool, we're just gonna set up a production company. We're gonna buy the clothes for the production company. As a matter of fact, we're buying watches. We're buying anything that shows up in the video through that. And guess what? Now, an expense turns into a tax deduction. Home office, you can write off half your utilities. I just bought a nice espresso machine. I made sure it went into the corner by the office, and that's where I make my espressos. And now all of a sudden, I get to write that off. Documentation and story. We can go through tons of that, but you've got the idea. You wanna do an annual meeting in cool locations, that's an expense turned into a deduction as well. You just gotta take notes. I just use Evernote. It takes me about two seconds in a dinner. I go through the notes and then I just send it off to my attorney. Now it's compliant. Now I can write that off. Want to master your money? Want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances? Click here and check out more videos like this on Money Matters.